The key to success in solving calorimetry problems is remembering it's all about the law of conservation of energy. When we talk about calorimetry, we're talking about a study of heat changes, and we use a device called a calorimeter. Now, a calorimeter can be something as simple as a coffee cup calorimeter, which it happens to be two nested styrofoam cups with a plate over the top and a, a thermometer stuck in a hole in the middle. Or it can be a very elegant thermos-type situation with, with an appropriate thermometer. Well, in any case, a calorimeter's idea is to be able to keep track of the heat involved in a process. Do you remember the first law of thermodynamics? Well, let me refresh you. We're talking about the change in energy of a system plus the change in the energy of the surroundings has to equal zero. Folks, it's the law of conservation of energy. You can say the heat in has got to be the same as the heat out because the heat in plus the heat out must equal zero. Now, do you recall that Q is equal to ms delta t? Maybe you learned it as Q equals mc delta t. Oh, same difference. Q, the heat in, is equal to the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. Therefore, the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature in to the system plus the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature out of the system has got to equal zero. Here is a rather straightforward problem. We have 20 grams of iron at 440 degrees Celsius, and we're putting it in 300 milliliters of water at 20 degrees Celsius. And we want to know what the, what the final temperature is that's going to be reached. And I've given you here the specific heat for iron. Now the Q for the iron plus the Q for the water must be equal to zero. And just as we showed in the previous screen, ms delta t is Q. So ms delta t for iron must be equal to ms delta t for water. The ms delta t for iron is the heat that iron is losing, that's negative. The ms delta t for water is the heat that water is gaining, that's positive. That's why it adds out to zero. We take our 20 grams of iron and that has a specific heat of 0 0.450 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we multiply it by the change in temperature. Now, the change in temperature is expressed as the final temperature minus the initial temperature, T sub F minus 440. And it's always expressed that way. That takes care, then, of the heat for iron. The heat for water, then, is the 300 milliliters. And the density of water is about one gram per milliliter. So at this temperature, it may not be exactly one gram per milliliter. It could be 0.9989 grams per milliliter. But that would still round off, wouldn't it? Yes. Times 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, which, of course, we thought you were born knowing. And the temperature, again, is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. T sub F minus 20 degrees Celsius. And those two together must equal zero. Now go through your algebra very carefully, and you will find that T sub F is 23 degrees Celsius. Very straightforward. But actually, there's a wrinkle in it. This would probably occur in a device called a calorimeter. And if it does, you've got to consider the fact that the calorimeter is also going to absorb heat. So let me show you how to figure how much heat the calorimeter will absorb so you will be able to allow for that and have a more accurate calculation. Here is a calorimeter. What we're going to do is find the heat capacity of this calorimeter by putting 20 milliliters of water in that calorimeter swirling it around, checking the temperature, and we find the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Then we add 30 milliliters of water at 90 degrees Celsius. We swirl that around a little bit, wait a minute, and check the final temperature and find it is 56 degrees Celsius. We now have enough information to determine the heat capacity of this coffee cup calorimeter. 
So let me show you how to work that. The Q for the hot water plus the Q for the cold water plus the Q for the calorimeter must equal zero. The Q for the hot water, do you recall? It's 30 grams times 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius times the final temperature of 56 minus the initial temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. That's the Q for the hot water. The Q for the cold water is 20 grams times 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius times 56 minus 20 degrees Celsius. That gives us the heat of the cold water, the heat that the cold water is going to absorb. And then we have the Q for the calorimeter, but altogether it must equal zero. When you work this through and being very, very careful with your algebra and your arithmetic, I found that the Q for the calorimeter was 1,265 joules. That's the amount of heat the calorimeter absorbed over that range of temperature change that was going on. That is the heat that's absorbed over 36 degrees Celsius, folks. That is not the heat capacity of the calorimeter. To find the heat capacity of the calorimeter, we take the 1,265 joules, divide it by 36 degrees Celsius, and we find the heat capacity of the calorimeter is 35 joules per degree Celsius. So in the future, if we use this calorimeter, we will know to allow for the absorption of heat of that calorimeter of about 35 de joules per degree Celsius. Do you remember in the previous problem we had 20 grams of iron at 440 degrees Celsius? placed in 300 milliliters of water at 20 in that same calorimeter that we just checked. And we want to know what's the final temperature. And here's a specific heat for iron. The Q for iron plus the Q for water plus the Q for the calorimeter has got to equal zero. So we have this, and notice the way I've expressed the Q for the calorimeter. It's heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature. Filling this information in, I have 20 grams times 0 0.450 joules per gram degree Celsius times a final temperature of minus 440 degrees Celsius plus the 300 milliliters of water at 1 gram per mil times a specific heat of water times its change in temperature plus the T sub F, the final temperature, that thing that we're still looking for, minus 20 degrees Celsius, that's the temperature change for the calorimeter, times the heat capacity of the calorimeter, which is 35 joules per degree Celsius. All of that should equal zero. And if you go through and do your algebra very, very carefully, you should come out with about 22.9 degrees Celsius. Now I know you're saying, well, that's not a whole lot different from the previous one. Well, no, I know it isn't, but sometimes it'll make a lot of difference, but you need to know how to do it. I hope this helps. Brought to you courtesy of Chemistry Professor, offering complete courses on DVD. Visit us at our website, www.chemistryprofessor.com.